Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR4 memory modules feature customizable multicolor lighting and are designed for overclocking with XMP 2.0 support. Give your build a unique look with vibrant RGB LED memory by Corsair. Click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! So today I was finally able to actually assemble my godly streaming system, the aptly named PC that I will be actually replacing my existing uh, capture and streaming system with, uh, which is one of the reasons I'm very excited to actually get this system put together because I'm gonna be getting a lot of use out of it. My existing streaming and capture system, which is powered by a 4770K and a GTX 770, already gets tons of use. I use it to capture audio, to capture video. I use it to stream our live show every Tuesday. Uh, so I just know that I'm going to be using this replacement system a ton. The second reason I'm really excited about this is that it's kind of going back to my roots of PC building. The focus here is really on performance and making a very silent running system. And I am very, very minimally concerned about the looks. It's gonna look like the case, the Dark Base 900, but there's no side panel window. So that's all you're really gonna see. With that said though, after getting my build area prepped and ready to go, my first task was actually to disassemble my high-end test bed that I built several months ago because I need to retrieve the CPU from there. Uh, the CPU I'm gonna be using is the 6950X 10 core highest end uh, consumer chip from Intel. It is crazy overpowered, but it is a chip that I have, which is why I'm using it. And it actually hasn't been getting very much use back here on my test bed. I've been doing most of my GPU testing recently with the 7700K, so the 6950X has really been underutilized. Also in this test bed is a 400 gig Intel 750 series SSD, and I got a second one of these to use in RAID, so I gotta pull that out as well. To run down all the parts going into this build though, at least for phase one right now, uh, let's start off again with that CPU, the Intel Core i7-6950X, 10 core processor. It'll cost you $1,600 or $1,700 if you buy it retail, so I've, I do not recommend anyone actually purchasing this chip, but since I have it, I'm gonna make some use out of it. And one of the big benefits here when you compare it to, say, AMD's new Ryzen CPUs is that it actually has 40 PCI Express lanes for tons of peripheral connectivity, and I'm actually gonna be using probably most of those. To cool it, I have the old school Noctua NHD15. I guess it's if, it would be the D14 if it's old school, but D15. Massive air cooler, super quiet, top of the class when it comes to cooling, so I know I'm gonna be happy with this uh, once I get over the color of the fans, of course. For the motherboard, I have the ASUS X99 Deluxe 2 uh, LGA 2011-3 motherboard. I've actually already used this motherboard. I had it in my uh, background system build for quite a while, several months back. But part of the reason I'm choosing this is because, again, I have lots of SSDs to connect. So I need M.2 connectivity, and then this also has a couple U.2 ports on it, so I can connect up my 750 series SSDs. And I know, based on the manual, that I'm not going to be losing connectivity for any of these ports once I plug one in. It's not going to disable the others. I do lose some lanes here and there, but as long as I have PCIe Gen 3 by 4 connectivity for all of my SSDs, I will be okay. For memory, I have a crazy huge kit, 64 gigs, a 4x16 gig kit, of course there's a Classic Vengeance LPX. Uh, actually what I'm installing here is a 4x8 gig kit, but the uh, kit that's on its way when it arrives, I'll just swap that in and it honestly looks exactly the same. For storage, I have uh, three SSDs and two hard drives. So the main operating system SSD is gonna be the Samsung 960 Pro, 512 gig, M.2 2280 uh, NVMe SSD, pretty much the fastest NVMe, NVMe SSD that's out there when it comes to a single M.2 one, uh, at least if you're not looking up in the enterprise range, and it's gonna be fantastic for the operating system and programs. For a capture drive, I have two Intel 750 series 400 gig U.2 NVMe SSDs, and I'm gonna be putting these in RAID 0. So that'll give me 800 gigs total, and it should be really, really fast for capturing stuff like 4K, high bit rates, uh, high color depth video. Uh, for long-term storage, I have a couple WD, uh, these are actually red 4 terabyte internal drives. Uh, these are NAS drives. I was gonna use black drives here, but I realized those uh, are actually in use, so uh, I have these instead, and I'm hoping actually most of the time these are just gonna be uh, sleeping and in standby mode, because they do make noise, but if I need long-term storage, I will have it. 
for a graphics card, of course, I got the GTX 1080 Ti. I don't have a Titan X or Titan X little P on hand, so the 1080 Ti will do. It's got 11 gigs. Uh, this is the Gigabyte Aorus version that I'm using here. Just recently did a bit of a review on this if you guys want to check it out. But runs really quiet and super powerful card, whether it's going to be for gaming or actually video editing. The case is the Be Quiet Dark Base 900. I have the all black version and the one with the solid side panel because again, my focus here is keeping things quiet. And since this has Be Quiet fans, uh, it's gonna be a super, super quiet running case. I'm actually really excited to work with it too because it's very big, but also very open and spacious. For a power supply, I should have plenty of juice to spare with my AVGA Supernova G3 850 watt. Uh, again, this is just the newest version, a replacement to the G3. Uh, all black cables looks pretty nice and totally gets the job done. AVGA has been really killing it with their power supplies over the past few years. Finally, for capture cards, what I'll be installing right now is actually one capture card and one playback card. These are from Blackmagic, the Blackmagic Design Decklink Mini Recorder 4K and Mini Monitor 4K. So one is an input, one is an output. They're HDMI 2.0 compatible, uh, and they do support 10-bit color depths, so that's pretty cool. I need to see what's happened with the software in the past six months for these, but um, once I actually get the system up and running, I will actually be adding some more capture devices because I can't really call this a godly streaming and capture system, which just a single capture device. Uh, I'll be adding the ones that I already have that I'm already using in my existing system that includes a Blackmagic Intensity Pro, that's a PCI Express card, a Razer Ripsaw USB 3.0 external device, as well as an Elgato Game Capture HD USB 2.0 external capture card. All that said though, it's high time to get this build underway. Here goes. anything less than just enjoyable. Uh, I was having a really good time just filming the parts as I moved along and the build process and everything came together really easily. I have to hand it to Be Quiet with the Dark Base 900. Uh, Dimitri was right on when he gave this uh, his Case of the Year award for 2016. Super easy to build in, tons of room, 
Tons of expandability, uh, easy swapping of all the different pieces. Everything comes apart to the way it should. Rivets are like practically nowhere to be seen. Uh, so great job, Be Quiet, and a fantastic case. Super, super silent too when I've actually powered on the system. Uh, the Be Quiet Silent Wings fans that are included there are just super quiet right out, of the, right out of the gate. So quiet, quiet, quiet. I guess that's why they call their company Be Quiet. Other than that though, uh, no incompatibility issues, which is very fortunate. Got all my drives in there, my SSDs and my U.2 drives. Uh, so from here, I think I really just have a bunch of software configuration to do. I gotta get Windows 10 installed and up and running. And of course, I gotta make sure that all of the drivers and everything are set up for my capture cards. And I might do that before I start adding in more capture devices, do some basic testing. I think I'm actually gonna do two follow-up videos for this build. With my monthly uh, build series, I usually do a single follow-up testing video. This time I'm gonna do two, because I think setup and software testing alone will deserve its own video. And then probably after I get back Back from Computex, so probably a couple weeks into June, I'll come back with some testing and performance numbers, not just for the capturing and streaming, but also for gaming as well, because I want this system to be able to act as a standalone capture system or to be able to game and stream on it at the same time. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. It's been an awesome build. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out if you did, and check the description for links to all the parts I've used, as well as some links to my store where you can buy some stuff and help support my channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.